in this season, I really need your prayers and your, and your love. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's get into this message today so that we can have a, a festive time this, this afternoon. Y'all stop with the tears and stuff. Come on. This is, this is, a, this is a good day. God is, is moving in this ministry. He's moving in our, in our lives. And so I'm, I'm excited for what he has to do in this ministry. And so we're in part three of this series that we've been in, Greater Reward. There's something greater for all of us. What, what we have right now, it, it's, it's just the tip of the iceberg, y'all. It, we, 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 we really haven't gotten into, into the, the deep, the, 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 the good stuff. You, you know, it, it's, almost like, it's almost like a neck bone. You really got to get in there really good to get to the good stuff. You know what I mean? That The, the outer surface is nice, but you got, you got to really dig in deep to get in on the good stuff. And I, I think right now we're, we're just, tapping, just, just tapping on the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more God has for us. There's a, a greater reward for, for us all. And so I, I just want to start by just giving us the title of, of today message right from the beginning so that you know what we're talking about today. The title, t- title of today's message is Just Do It. Just do it. Three, three simple words that Nike ha- has used to, to create a billion dollar company. We see just, we, uh, over the past 30 years, we've seen Just Do It on billboards, on the side of buses. Some of us have even worn it on, on T-shirts and hoodies and, and sweatshirts. Nike has used this, these three simple words and made it the, the, rich, the most richest three words in the world. Nike was once a million-dollar company in the early 80s when they transformed and started using this Just Do It campaign. Today, they are uh, near, nearly a, a trillion dollar worldwide company. And these, three, and these three words, just do it, is what started it all. And, and the campaign was just about, there are so many people in this world who are wanting better. Oh, I, I want to be in shape. I want to be, I want to be that, that, that champion athlete. Or oh, I want to, I want to lose weight. I, I, I want to be better with, with, with my finances. I want to be better in my life. I want to be better parents to, to my children. I want to be better. And we all have that desire to be better. We, 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 we're trying for it. But eventually Nike just said, hey, sometimes you just got to do it. You may not have all the skills. You may not have the the top coaches or or trainers, but sometimes you just got to get out on that field and just do it. Sometimes you just got to walk into that office and just do it. Sometimes you got to walk into that church building and you see that there's a void that needs to be filled. You just got to do it. And so I I, I love that campaign that that Nike had, but but, but the, the fact is most of us, we don't just do it. Have you ever wondered why? You want to change. You want better. You want to do better. You want to be better. But you don't. Something happens along the way and it just trips you up. And and all of a sudden you find yourself stuck where you have been for a number of years or you regress and and, and you're even further, uh, further away from your journey than being closer. And so today I want to share with you what I believe is an incredibly powerful truth that is found in Scripture. A truth that has the power to change your mindset and, and even change your, your, your life if, if you allow it to. And once you live long enough, I just said that I'm going to be 50 this year. Once you live long enough, it's kind of, kind of depressing to, to know that year after year, your New Year's resolutions sound the same. <laughs> come on, come on. How many years have you said, I want to lose weight? <laughs> We've all been there. I've been saying I've been that's been one of my New Year's resolutions for since I started gaining weight in 1993. <laughs> 30 plus years I've been saying, oh, this is the year. This is the year I'm, I'm gonna lose all that weight this year. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get right this year. This is the year. I've been saying for at least five years, this is the year I'm gonna take my shirt off on the beach. <laughs> I go to the beach, I got a shirt on. Pastor Tasha and I went to Hawaii, I'm out there with a tank top. Everybody else looking like David Hasselhoff in, in Baywatch, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking like, ugh, I am <laughs> like one of the clumps. <laughs> but year after year, we, we have the same resolution. Maybe yours, this is the year I stopped smoking. 
And you still going to the store picking up that pack of cools. I don't even know they sell cools no more, but <laughs> it, I, I just remember that from a kid. Pack of cool miles. I used to go to the store when I was eight years old to get a pack of cool miles for my grandfather. <laughs> or, or, or maybe you said, this is, this is the year that my finances get in order. That I become a better manager of my finances. But you're still living paycheck to paycheck. This, this is the year that I get closer to God and, and I follow his word. I do his will, but we still cussing folk out. This is the year that, 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 that not only am I going to join a church, this is the year that I get active in a church and I serve in a church. Something happens and you stop going. You stop serving. This is the year that everything changes for my life and then by mid-year everything has remain the same. We try so hard to succeed, and, and, and sometimes we do. Sometimes we, we, we succeed for a few weeks. Do you know that's why um, Planet Fitness and, and all these, these fitness clubs during Christmas time, that's all you see, commercials for. Join, join for free. Join for free. They, they don't tell you after 30 days how much you got to pay, but they'll, they'll let you join for free. But they, but they put a lot of money out, out in, in, in early December to start getting you to join because they know most people's resolution is, I want to be healthy in the new year. So, yeah, I'm going to go back to the gym. I'm going to join a new gym. So they got your money by January. And you go to the gym. You bought the new gym clothes. You done, you done went to the Nike outlet and, and bought the new shoes. You got the, the matching fit. You got the, 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 the stretchy pants and yoga pants. And you, you looked apart. But by February... Planet Fitness got their money, and everybody at the gym like, where the people at? The real ones in the gym, but the, the, the ones who, who, who said they were going to, but something happens, and now they're not. By, by February, they're going. Matter of fact, I, I saw a statistic this week that said that 80% of people who join gyms at the, at, during the new year, 80% of them stopped going by, by, by Valentine's Day. <laughs> they didn't put six weeks into the gym, and by, by Valentine's Day, I'm done. I, I, thought I, I thought this was a year. I'm going to wait till next year. We, we, got, we got a family reunion this summer. I know I want to eat good at that. This is going to be my last rib, Lord. I promise. This is going to be my last time. I'm going vegan next year. <laughs> I, I, I'm joking because Quincy's talking about, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going ve vegan next month. <laughs> 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 but we try really hard for, for a short time, but something happens and we fall back. We stop overeating. We stop smoking. We stop doing, doing things that, that breaks God's heart. But something pulls us back into it and we, and we fall back. We, we, we start reading the Bible more. We start praying. We just start working out. But something happens and we just start to drift away. We start getting better with our money. We start seeing a little, little cushion, and we start telling us, ooh, I, I'm, by, by the time summer co comes, I'm going to have enough for, for that vacation that, that I want. But all of a sudden, it, it becomes Amazon free delivery day. <laughs> and you look at everything that you got saved in, in your wish list on Amazon, and all of a sudden, you, you're further away from that dream vacation than, than being closer to it. See, the fact is, we want to do what's right. We, we, we want to do the, the, the good thing, we, but we also do what's wrong and, and, and what's bad for our lives. And as I said in week one, with God's help, we can choose what we want most over what we want right now. But it's a choice. We can choose what we want most. I want, the, I want to be healthy. I want that better relationship with God. I, I, want, I want my family to be, to be made whole. I, I want that, but what do I want right now? See, right, right now, I, 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 want, I want to please me. Right now, I, I, I want, that, I want that, that temporary satisfaction. And, and, and so sometimes what we want in the moment gets away from the greater, greater reward. And so I want you to go with me now. So we're going to talk about just do it today. I, I, want, I want us to start by going to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27 is what we're going to read today. And it says here, it says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the prize. So run to win. I want, I, I want you to hear that clearly. Run to win. Everybody say that. Run to win. 
Verse 25 says, all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. In verse 26, it says, so I run with purpose in every step. And I'm not just shadow boxing. <laughs> I love that. And verse 27 says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. And as I spoke to you earlier, sometimes I've been in that mode to where I felt like I was shadow boxing, but, and, and, and I, I come out and I preach to others, but I, I, I worry if I myself might be disqualified. You see, the people Paul was, was writing to, they clearly uh, understood this, this competition metaphor that he was using uh, about running to win because he was talking to the Corinthians and in Corinth at this time, which was in Greece, and we know that during this time, every four years, Greece hosted the ancient Olympic Games. And so he was talking with, with the, the people in Corinth who had their own form of the Olympic Games. It was called the Isthmian Games. And so in these games, it would include chariot races. They, they would box and they would wrestle and they would even have poetry contests because poetry was a sport then. And they would have these, these poetry contests, and then they would have all these competitions. So he was talking with people who knew what competition, and he was likely talking to them during the time of, of their games. And so he started using these metaphors about competition because he knew, he knew that that, that's, that would click with them. So Paul was talking to a group that understood the, the value of, of competition. So look at verse 24 again. He said, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs but only one gets the prize. Yeah, yeah. Then he says, so run to win. If you're going to be in the race, don't run just to be in the race. <laughs> if you're going to be in the race, don't run just to get a participation ribbon. <laughs> Come on, we, we live in a time right now, you sign your, son, your, your, your child up, up, up to, to play any sport, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, it doesn't matter. At the end of the season, everybody gets a trophy. When, when, when I grew up, if, if you didn't win the championship, you got nothing. Thank you, for, thank you for participating, but you didn't win anything. Everyone didn't, get, get, didn't get, a, get a trophy. And so Paul was saying, if you're going to be in this thing, thank you. If you're going to be in this thing, run to win. If, if you're going to live for Jesus, run to win this life with Jesus. Don't just be in it just to say I'm a Christian. Don't just be in it just to say, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what mama did. This is what daddy did. This is what grandma did. So I got to do it too. No, be in this thing to win it. Life is going to come at you hard. You're going to have situations. You're going to have some trials in your life. So you better run this life to win and have victory over every single one of those situations. I don't know about you, but I love to win. I get it from my dad. I was, I was seven years old, and he would take me in the backyard. We would play basketball one-on-one, -on -one, and he never let me win. And I would run into the house crying to my mama. If she comes and asks me what's wrong, I said, he didn't let me win. And she would look at my dad. Well, can't, well, can't you just let the boy win one time? <laughs> and my dad would say, no. He, 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 got, he got to beat me. He got to really beat me. So it was at least another five years before I was even looking him almost eye to eye. So I'm, this is five years strong that he just kept beating me, kept beating me over and over again. Over, but every time he come home from work, come on, he grabbed the basketball. Let's go. Let's go. And we were out in that backyard and, and we knew how it would end, but we still did it. <laughs> I knew I was going to lose. But somehow when I got about 12 or 13, all that losing came to an end, finally, and I beat him. And I ran into the house and told my mom, I told everybody I couldn't wait to get to school the next day to tell everybody, I beat my dad, finally. And my dad just said, well, I bet you can't do it again. I said, well, you done, you, you done put something in me now. Now, now I, I got a taste of winning. I know what it feels like, and it feels good. Let's go back out. We went back out, and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but it stirred something up in me to where now I'm, I'm, I'm not super competitive, but I'm, when it's time to compete, I'm, I'm, comp I'm competing to win. I don't want to just say, oh, that, that, that was fun. Uh, I lost. I got blew out, but that was fun. No, I'm, I'm playing to win. I don't care what we playing. We, we could be playing old maid with some, with some broke down, tattered up cars. I'm playing to win. I'm going I'm to slam that car like, like we're playing spades. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm playing to win. We could be playing Jenga. I'm looking at things that, like I'm an architect. Now, which one can I pull out? Because I want to win. I want to win. And that's the same thing with, with, my, with my walk in, with, with, with Christ. Sometimes I want to say that the enemy thinks that he won around. That the enemy thinks that he, he got the best of me. But no, I, I want to win this thing called life. And, so, and I, I know just by trusting in my God. I know by walking in his word. I know by honoring him at all times that I will win this thing. God is, God is pleased with your walk. God is pleased with your run. So run to win this life. I love to win. And I know some people say, well, you're a Christian, Pastor Trey. Shouldn't you, you, you shouldn't focus on, on winning. I don't care if, if your child five years old, if they, if they, if they come to me and say, Pastor Trey, I, I bet I could beat you in a race. I'm going to say, I bet you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and we going to race. <laughs> but <laughs> Paul didn't say run to finish because we all going to finish this race. One way or another, we all going to finish. But Paul didn't say that. Paul did, Paul did say, run to just, just, to just participate. He said, run to win. And there are several places in Scripture that tell us to go win. So th th this, is, this is Bible. When, when we run into win, when, when, when we say that we're champions, this is, this is Bible talking. That we're in a, a spiritual battle in, in the, these times that we live in. So we, we better be, be living to win. We, 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 it says in the Bible that we have victory in Jesus. That's winning, isn't it? The Bible says that, that we are more than conquerors. That's winning. So run to win. I want to give you this, this, this key point as, as, as we journey in this, this word together today. Don't forfeit the joy of honoring God with your best. See, sometimes we, we limit our, our best because, oh, if, if, if I win, it, it, it looks like I'm, I'm better than everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm worried that, I, that I'm, I'm better than, than everyone else. So, so let me hold back. Do not forfeit the joy. There's a joy in honoring God. There's a joy in winning the, 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 this Christian life. There's joy in that. So give your best to it. Don't forfeit that just because you're worried that other people will deny you. I've been talking for, for several weeks now with, well, months really, with, with, with Bianca, one, one of our people getting baptized today. And I told her, you're going to lose people. You're going to lose people who you thought were going to be lifelong friends because you made the decision that I'm going to make this walk with Jesus, that I'm, I want to live this life to win. You're going to lose people, but the fact is you, you won't lose. You won't lose it. And, and, and so in, in this walk, you, you're going to, to lose people. But don't forfeit what God has given you just to please people. Don't forfeit the joy, the, the, the joy of honoring God. Give him your best. Give him your life. Give him everything. Don't deny yourself the thrill of victory with Jesus just to have the agony of defeat with people. There's a thrill of victory to walk with Jesus. So why am I not winning, Pastor Trey? Why am I not achieving my, my goals? Why, why am, am I not making progress in my life? I want to give you an answer. Listen to me good. You've been trying too long. You've been trying too long. You've been trying to quit smoking. You've been trying to start praying more. You've been trying to, to stop cussing. You've been trying to, 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 be more, to be more loving. You've been trying to, to stop worrying so much. You've been trying not to, to gossip. You've been trying to get in better shape. You've been trying and trying and trying and trying for so long, but you've been trying for too long. And that's the problem that you've been trying, and I want to, to tell you to stop trying and start training. Stop trying 
and start training. See, trying never achieves a consistent result. You could, you could try to learn how to ride a bike, but until you ride the bike, you're not going to get the result. Trying never achieves a consistent result. Only training does. There's one thing that my, my favorite athlete, Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul, but Co Kobe, he would show up at the gym. Practice didn't start till 8 o'clock in the morning. Kobe would show up at 4.30 in the morning. And there's a story, if, if you ever watch the, the, the Redeem Team uh, documentary that, that's on Netflix, they, they had their training cap for, for the Olympic team, I think it was back in uh, 2004, I, I believe, the Olympic team. They had their, tra their, their training uh, in Las Vegas. You put 12 millionaire basketball players in Las Vegas, and you want them to commit to training <laughs> in Sin City? So after pr practice each day, all the players would, would say, hey, where are we going out tonight? What, what club are we hitting? And so they, they, they were upstairs in their room changing clothes. And so it was, you know, 9 o'clock at night, and they're headed out to the clubs. And they asked, Cole, Cole, you, come, you coming with us, Kobe? You, you coming with us? I said, no, nah, I'm going to bed. They would be coming in back home from the clubs at 4 in the morning. And, and, and LeBron James even said, we would have been in the club all night. We getting on the elevator. We get, we get on the elevator. And who's on the elevator? Kobe Bryant. Like, yo, I thought you were going to bed. He said, I did. Like, where are you going now? He said, I'm going to train. It's 4.30 in the morning, Kobe. What, what, what? Well, we don't have practice for, for another four hours. Why, why? But it was by his example of saying, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to train my body because I, I, I'm not in this thing just, just, just to appease America but by, by being on this Olympic team. I'm here for a gold medal. And, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that I get this gold medal. So he was up at 4.30 in that gym, lifting weights, running laps. He's doing whatever he had to. And all of a sudden, it, it, the message hit, hit home with one player. It hit home with one player, and it started with, with, with LeBron James. And LeBron said, well, if that's a proven champion already, if this is the way he's training his body, tomorrow morning I'm joining you. And so it started with one, and all of a sudden, by the end of the week, every single player on that team was getting up at, 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 and being in the gym at 4.30 in the morning because they knew that they could try to wake up. They could try to be there, but it wasn't until training that they would get the results that they needed. Trying is a, an attempt to change with minimal commitment. You see, why Kobe was training, the rest of the team, they was just trying. We're, we're, we're trying to, to win this thing. We're trying to, to get a gold medal. Kobe was training for one. Trying is an attempt, again, to change with minimal commitment. And training is a wholehearted commitment to achieve a specific result. What are you trying to achieve in this life with Christ? What has he called you to? What is that thing in your heart that you just cannot stop thinking about and you know it, that God has gifted you with, with this gift and this talent and, and, and you know where he's trying to take you, but because you're trying to get there, you've been trying for so long, you haven't reached it, maybe it's time to start training. Paul talked about this. He said, I train my body. He wasn't an athlete. He was a preacher. But he said, I still, I train my body just like an athlete does because I'm running this race to win. Let's go right now to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, who, 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 who was one of uh, Paul's, basically the one Paul coached. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. It says, don't waste time arguing over godless ideas <laughs> and old wives' tales. It says, instead, here he's saying the same thing, so you know he was trained by Paul. He said, train yourself to be godly. <laughs> Too often we're trying to be godly, but we need to train ourselves to be godly. We cannot try being godly just because we saw what, what, what we thought looked godly in somebody else. Well, when I grew up, sister so-and-so did it this way, or brother so-and-so did it this way, so I guess that's what I should be trying to do. Here, Timothy is saying, train yourself to be godly. Study the word for yourself to show yourself approved. Train yourself to be godly. It says in verse 8, physical training is good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. He said, but training for godliness is much better. Promising, you could go to Planet Fitness every day for the next six weeks, but it does not guarantee results. If you look at the commercials, 
you, you, and, and you push pause and, and look at that fine print on the bottom of the screen, that's a disclaimer that says, we don't guarantee these results. You, you, you look at, those, you look at those, those, those commercials where everybody taking this weight loss medicine and, 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 or taking Ozempic, sticking their stomach to lose weight, but on the bottom of the screen, it says we can't guarantee these results. And, 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 and matter of fact, what we can guarantee is these side effects. You may suffer from dizziness, headaches, trauma, and all these other things and everything else. You might become broke. And, 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 and there's even, we're going to throw in death because just in case you do die, you, we don't want your family to sue us. It's a lot. It's a lot. But here it is in verse 8. It says physical training is good, but training for godliness is better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So when you're training, don't act according to your feelings. I don't feel like training today. I don't don't feel like it. I don't feel like going to work. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like studying the Bible. I don't feel like praying. I just don't feel like it today. You don't study the Bible because you feel like it. You don't go to church because you feel like it. When you're training, you act according to your commitment. See, I'm committed to this church. That's why I show up. I'm committed to God, so that's why I study his word. I'm committed to this thing. Yes, sometimes I get distracted. There may be some things in my life that that has caused me to slow my walk, but yet and still I'm committed to this thing. So when I fall, which I may do, and scrape my knee a few times, I'm going to get back up and continue to train my body. You don't study your Bible. You You don't try to study your Bible. You do study your Bible. Come on, you don't try to go to church. You go to church. You don't don't try to have a better marriage. You commit to a greater marriage. So how do you make the commitment? How do I make this commitment to train my spiritual body, Pastor Trey? You answer the call. You answer the call. Now, I'm about to, I'm going to just give you this disclaimer. Here, see, now I'm giving you a disclaimer. I'm about to give you a disclaimer. What I'm about to say right now is probably going to mess up some of your theology. It's going to truly mess you up because trust me, when I say it, I've studied it. I studied it. I researched it. And most of all, y'all, I prayed over this thing because it messed up my theology. I was like, Lord, I I cannot tell them this. This this is messing me up. Lord, are are you sure? And and I prayed over this thing all all week because I just wasn't sure it was the, the right thing to to, to say. So I wrestled all week and it just wrecked me because one of my favorite verses in the Bible, this totally changed how I understood it. And so, so many people, they they get stuck in in, in trying and they never go into training because they are waiting on a calling. (laughs) So many people get stuck trying because they're waiting on a calling. See, I I cannot serve because I haven't been called. See, I I cannot do ministry because I haven't been called. See, I I cannot worship because I haven't been called into that. I'm I'm, I'm not going to serve in the church because I I, I think I know what my calling is. So I I cannot be, I cannot serve in in kids' church because kids aren't my calling. (laughs) Come on, I've had people tell me that, literally. I've had people tell me that they cannot be a greeter because that's not their calling. Unbelievable. I cannot serve in that role, Pastor Trey, because that's not my, my, my calling. I hate to, to, to bust your bubble, but God is not going to call you into a role. He's not going to call you into a place. He's, he's not going to call you that. But Pastor Trey, I'm gifted in this area. I, I, clearly, it's, it's, it's a calling, right? Surely God is calling me to use your gifts. Here's your key point for today. Your gift is not your calling. I know I just messed you up with that. Your gift is not your calling. You could be gifted in many a things, but God didn't call you to it. Your gift is not your calling. Your gift is what, what you use to operate to fulfill the Great Commission. Whatever your gift is, you use that to fulfill the Great Commission. If my gift is to preach, I'm going to use that to fulfill the Great Commission. Go into all the world, preaching the gospel, making sure that we're we're preaching this thing, we're giving this thing to the lost. That's my gift. 
But what if my gift, I, I, I lose the gift? Am I not called anymore? Look, look what it says in, in Romans, my, my, my favorite verse. This is, this is what messed me up, y'all, because this is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Romans 8, 28. And we're going to read through, through uh, down to verse 30. It says, and we know that God calls us everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. See, a lot of times we stop right there. <laughs> and we know, we, we, come on, and we know God calls everything to work for his good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Yes and amen, I believe it. But we leave out those last two words. For them. For them. Not our purpose for ourselves. It's God's purpose for us. What he has called us to do, what he has destined for our lives. And go, go on to, to verse 29. It says, for God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among, among many brothers and sisters. And verse 30 says, and here it is. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Here's what I want to get to. Your calling, this is your only calling. Your calling is to come to God. Your calling is to, he said it here in verse 30 at the beginning. He said, and having chosen them, he called them to what? Come to him. He didn't say, I'm calling you to preach. I'm calling you to sing. I'm calling you to do outreach. I'm calling you to do this. He said, come to me. That's your calling. And once you come to me, I will give you gifts to operate in the great commission to go into all the world preaching this gospel so that my church expands to every single corner of this world. Your calling is to come to him. Preaching is not my calling. Preaching is a gift that I receive to draw near to God. Pastoring is not my calling. It's the greater reward for using my gift to continually come to him and into his presence. I can pastor all day and never come into the presence of God. I can preach till I'm blue in the face, but if I don't come into the presence of God, it's all for not. I'm looking for the greater reward. And here's the thing. You can have more than one gift. You got one calling, but you can have many gifts. So that's why I shut down people when they say, I can't serve in children's church because that's not my calling. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't serve on the production team because that's not my calling. You were called to come to God. You can serve in any role in this church or any other church. The calling is to come to him so that your gifts, talents, the wisdom, knowledge that he has given you can be used in areas that you never imagined before. When I first started in ministry, my pastor at the time, Bishop Doherty, he, he said, I want you over to youth. Uh-uh. <laughs> and I almost said it. Bishop, that's not my calling. You, you didn't call me to this, I, you, a bunch of teenagers, me? Uh-uh, because we, we, we might end up fighting. No, uh-uh, no. But he said, no, it's not your calling, it's your gift. Because he knew I had a gift of communication. He knew I had a gift of relating to people. He knew it, it, just my, my, the, the way that, that, that I just, the, the way that I was raised and, and the way that I connect with people, he knew that that would connect with young people. So he said, that, use your gift. Use your gift. And we, we, we and I became the youth pastor. Then afterwards, when we moved from Atlanta to Savannah, the, the next church that, that we were a part of, the pastor came to me and said, I want you to be the service pastor. What is that? What is a service pastor? Well, you'll be responsible for the worship team. You'll be responsible for production. And I started looking at all those knobs and, and, and tools that we got over there in that corner. And I said, no, I ain't. <laughs> this is too much. This is not my calling, but he said, use your gift. 
because he knew I liked to read and he knew that I was going to go home and download every owner's manual for every single piece of equipment over there so that I could learn how to manually operate that, that stuff. He said, I know you think that this is not what you're called to, but use your gift. Where did I hear that before? I heard it a few years before. So I'm, I'm telling you now, it doesn't matter what the role is to just use your gift. But be careful around people who, who tell you they are called to something. They are called by God into something. I've, I've, I've sh- sh- shut down a lot of people who have come to me and said, Pastor Trey, I, I, I want to be a part of, of Life Words Church, uh, but I want to let you know I've been called to preach. <laughs> you never set foot in Life Words Church, but you're telling me that you've been called to preach here. And that conversation ends very quick. We've had many conversations with people who, who would have been probably great worship leaders here. And, and some of you here for the first time say, well, I've never seen video worship, but, but it works for us. Because we're able to, the money that we would be paying a, a band and singers, we're able to invest that back into the community. And that matters more to me than having a worship team up here. But we've had many conversations with potential worship leaders. And the first thing that came out of their mouth was that I'm called to do this. I'm called to lead worship. I'm called to be a singer. I'm called to this. But are you called to be a part of this ministry? Or are you called to just be here to get a check and soon as some, someone else offers you a bigger check, are you going to leave? See, I, I don't need that type of calling for people because, because worship, worshiping, leading in worship is so important. You're leading people into the presence of God. And so I don't need someone who's going to be here for just a season. I need someone who's going to be committed to training. My response to those people say they were called to preach. Well, are you willing to serve or are you just interested in a, in a title? See, because we have here at Life Word Search, we have this, this mindset, this culture here of towels over titles. If you're not willing to pick up a towel, you can't have a title. If, if, you see a, if you see a mess in, 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 or, 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 as you leave out of here, if there's a, a spill, are you willing to pick up a towel or are you more interested in a title that tells somebody else to do it? See, God is looking for people who are willing to pick up a towel over who are willing to have a title. And the reason I say be careful with people who say that they were called is because what if the ability to do that thing that you say that you were called to do is taken away from you? What if you develop polyps in your throat and you're no longer able to, to preach or to sing? Are you no longer called? What, what, what if the, the church building closed down and, 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 and you had nowhere to worship? Are you no longer called to evangelize? See, see, see we, 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 we think that we're called to something and we can only do that, that one thing. But what if that one thing is taken away? Is God not still calling you to do something of a greater reward? Or will you, be, will you be like those athletes who are just trying and now you're just stuck in this one condition, this one, this one set of being for the rest of your life because your calling is gone. Your calling is not gone. It's just the thing that you once did to spread the gospel is now taken away. Now it's time to pivot into something different and still fulfill the Great Commission. Don't mistake your gift for a calling. You don't need a title to operate in your gift. Just do it. Just do it. And as I, as I conclude today, God is not concerned with the title you place before your name or after it. God is not concerned with Pastor Trey Everett. And all these other initials they put people put after their name, the MSDIV and the JD, if you studied law, the MBA and all and ABC and one, two, threes that we put put after. God is not concerned with any of that. If you make it, if you if you come up to me and you say, hey, Trey, I'm going to say, hey, how you doing? I'm not going to say that's Pastor Trey. Do you think when I get to heaven and I stand before God and he says he, he's going to use my full name, Montre DeAndre Everett, you think I'm going to go to him and say, no, God, that is Pastor Trey. You gave me that name. 
I've been in so many circles where people get offended. You may call them Reverend Johnson, and they say, no, it's Apostle Johnson. <laughs> Pastor Jones, no, it's now Deacon Jones. <laughs> well, you, you giving yourself all these titles, I'm confused. Because you were just pastor last week, now you're Apostle, next week you're going to be Bishop. God is not concerned with those titles. His concern is if you are continually coming to him. That's what God is concerned about. My child, are you continuously coming to me? Do, in, in those times of trials, are, are, you, are you coming to lay at my feet? In those times of success, are you coming to, to thank me? Are you continuously coming to be in my presence? And are you continuously using what I gave you to spread the gospel to the lost? That's my concern. I'm not concerned with the title. I'm not concerned with your education or the lack thereof. I just want to know, can you come to me? Can, can you trust me? Can you rely on me? And, and, and when you fall, will you even crawl back to me? Rather than trying to stand on your own. So as we prepare to leave, if there's nothing else you get out of today's message, just do it. Just do it. Some of you have been waiting and waiting and waiting and trying and trying and trying. God is saying this time's out for the waiting. Lord, I'm waiting for the for the right time to commit to the church. God is saying the time is always right now. Lord, I'm just waiting for the right time to start serving in the church. God is telling you the right time is now. Just do it. God, I've, I've been waiting for the, for the right time to start saving, to, for, 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 to, to buy my first home. God is saying the time is now. Just do it. Start saving now. Just, just do it. Lord, I've been waiting for the right time to be that godly man or woman so that you can send a godly man or woman my way. So I'm just waiting for the right time to, to, to kind of disconnect from, from people who don't pour into me. God is saying the time is now. Just do it. Just do it. You have a desire on your heart. You have a dream that you cannot shake. Don't try anymore. Train. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven. 